cancelled. Episode 7, they did a funny half hour, a.k.a. Maud Internet Spoiled. Museum Wars. The Room's Revenge. Internet Silent Movie Day. Podcast camera pans over dimly lit, antique-filled museum room with eerie atmosphere. We hear, hear faint whispers as camera focuses on two brothers, Sam and Ben. And they get a particular ornate room, animate peculiar ornate chef. Uh, can I have your screen, please? I also only... I went on and had a look through these, and this was the only one that I did anything to. Good. I just stopped immediately. And Canceled action. It's been seven hours and 16 days, Benny boy. I don't think anyone is coming. Oh, this is insane, Sam. How did we get tricked into this? And with a baby. Podcast camera cuts to the room's ornate ornatia door. Now firmly closed. Did you hear the way that door closed? It creaked as if mocking us. To creak a mocking door. I definitely added that. We need to document this. We're two brothers and a baby and a dog stuck in a room, captured by a sentient room. Podcast camera catches the somber faces lit only by the room's eerily glow. We're all alone and we're running out of options and oxygen. Podcast camera shifts to wide-angle view of room, revealing ancient artifacts collecting dust, forgotten and untouched, completely clothed and untouchable. In a world where reality bends and rooms come to life, two brothers, you and I, find ourselves trapped in this nightmare. Why don't you put on that dusty old radio, Sam? Okay. It's been a long day without you, my friend. I thought the music mattered, but does it bollock as compared to how people matter? In Nikki and Kaz, in Nikki and Kaz, ma na, ma na. His name is Mo Man and Mo Man. That tune, it is melancholic to say the least. The sound of the melancholic sound filled the room. Cut a montage of two brothers reminiscing about better times. The laughter juxtaposed against the dire situation. The room holds them hostage and the world has forgotten. The podcast camera reveals a Sponsorship banner, tattered and faded. Sponsors have abandoned us, Sam. Goodbye, Nestle Bunny. Farewell, the log lady of Shield Square. It's just us and the room. My face is full of resignation. Mine is full of fear, but we won't give up. Determined, we will find a way out to escape this nightmare or run out of oxygen trying. Podcast camera pans back to the ornate door as it slowly creaks to reveal a flicker of hope. Will the brothers conquer the sentient room's malevolence or will they remain trapped forever? The podcast screen fades to black as the ornate door creeps open a little more, leaving their fate uncertain. End of script. Mod yes. octopus right in a hamster. I'm so sad I can't even do the theme chant. What does it go like? Because Maud, it's a sad, sad curse. She's dead and gone forever. Oh, the end. We can't leave Tom, Ben, Sam, whomever. We, why don't we just jump into content? I can't get sponsors on, and the moratorium list is in my other pants pocket. The end. I don't work. I don't work off my own. I need an auto cue. I need some kind of. I'm not going any further with that script. Okay. Well, here's. I, one. Don't, even, I don't even know who this this mod is. Oh, are we losing just... our minds? <laughs> Maybe. Here's, here's seven and a half minutes of RuPaul's <laughs> Drag Race. <laughs> with just the name of Wu Wu Sheng, you uh, occasionally edited into it. Listen up, you fucking sea bags! It's me, Jeff Apple Clone Forty Two. I escaped the Heaven Compound. It's a shitting fuck show up there. Let me tell you, in a story I can't get into now. 
I escaped and thanks to help from a Kung Fu Jedi Master and DJ Rashid Barlow from Coronation Street, my life was spared. I can't get into it right now. Anyways, I see Aisha landed in some kind of sort circle based additional dialogue recording studio so it seems a bit fucking rude not to have a whack dozen pit so listen up wank shafts, here's this week's fucking sponsor race. The swearing has diminishing returns doesn't it? Twat balls. Category is. Just bin but ball gowns. First up, serving, glamorous ball gown that represents Welsh folklore icon Mary Nude, realness, it's Mary Nude. Next, giving cred, because I ran out of Bingbot credit, the Devon mage is wearing something loosely based on a muddy puddle, because of Peppa Pig or whatever. Slamming down the runway in this, glamorous ball gown that looks like a space suit, black, it's Rex Ruffingham, this is a flanned ball for your life we need to see your flans Rex, take the helmet off. That's a good boy. Following that up is death in, skeletal style ball gown, also from Cran. But death must be getting full by now, because this look is absolutely eating. And lastly, it's good kings are settlers, in a ball gown that looks like how Kenny is dressed in South Park for some reason. Works as. And now we are pleased to announce, walking the runway for one week only, the cast of the Dorita Funnies are part 2. Please welcome. Diane Sharpie Sharpie. Why did Diane Sharpie Sharpie? the former security guard of MFINDB1, make a great watermelon person. Because she had a knack for keeping things, see you, Big Wayne. Why did Big Wayne bring a ladder to the bar? Because he had the drinks were on the house. Rod and Todd Hobgoblin, I'm sorry, but I'm not aware of any specific individuals named Rod and Todd Hobgoblin in my training data. If you have more information or context about them, I'd be happy to try to create a joke based on that information. The philosophers aka Michel Foucault, Artie Rando, Guy Debord, Pierre Bordux and Kerry Derrida. Why did Michel Foucault, Artie Rambo, Guy Debord, Pierre Bordux and Kerry Derrida start a band? Because they wanted to deconstruct music theory and Fou collaborate on some radical tunes. Also because of Atomic Kitten. I added that myself. Ergen the Star Child and Envelope Johnson. Ergen the Star Child said, In Evelop, I've traveled to the end of space time and witnessed the birth and death of countless universes. It's truly mind boggling. In Evelop replied, Well, honey, that's all well and good, but can you tell me when my lost sock from the laundry is going to reappear? I've been searching the entire cosmos for it. Ergen the Star Child responded, Ah, the mysteries of the universe, in Evelop. Some questions are just too profound to answer, like the sock that vanished into the cosmic laundry abyss. Season 1 competitors Ianis Sanakis and Baby Jack Derrida. Why do Sanakis and Derrida make a great pair? Because Sanakis adds the complexity, and Derrida adds the interpretation. Anton Wijibo, why did Uncle Anton Wijibo, the podcast host and voodoo lord, start a new show about magic tricks, because he wanted to keep his audience spellbound and craving for more tricks of the trade, Dr. Drake Scaramouche, why did the Canadian rapper Dr. Drake Scaramouche become a sensation in the Great White North, because he had the ice cold rhymes, that could even make snowmen nod their heads, also, he did the fandango I added that too, stamp, why did Stamp with a bottom, the wacky old character, bring a ladder to the library? Because he heard the books were on a high shelf of knowledge, and he wanted to reach new heights in wisdom. Representing the monkeys he to Z, Monkey Ezra, why was the construction monkey so sad? Because he just couldn't find his banana nut wrench. Captain Shook Vlogs, why did Captain Shook Vlogs, the alligator twitch hacker, become a famous streamer, because he knew how to snap into action and make his followers go chomp crazy with his gaming skills. H Robo, Dave and Battery, why did the robot invite the calculator and battery to his party? Because he knew they could always calculate a good time and keep the energy levels high. The room that came to be, why did the room that came to be throw a party for all the other rooms in the house because it wanted to prove that it was more than just four walls and a ceiling it had a real romance with hospitality oh shit it's the holder of the original dna jeff apple the first why did jeff apple 
The billionaire Ripley space rack with a bowl cut and a woolen rainbow jumper decide to invest in intergalactic cheese production because he wanted to turn his billions into cheddar billions and live happily ever ways after. And last but certainly not least, everybody bow down, shut the windows hand and welcome the current sponsor supreme, Whited Onion, the cheeky Scottish parrot who says, I, get a job at the bakery. Because he couldn't resist squawking, I, roll with it, laddie, whenever someone ordered a baguette, why a cheeky bastard? Well they were all just dreadful and I can only apologize, I'm cream crackered, let's just go and sit on the couch, watching James Bond, eating potato chips on the couch they're yummy and squammy just like a, fam, eee, me, oh I forgot here's special guest Marky, Smith dressed in a Presquitch ball gown and pastey and other assorted Latin mumblings, why did Marky, Smith decide to write a play called, Hey Luciani? because he thought it was about time to prove that post-punk music and papal intrigue had more in common than anyone realized. Altogether now stop. You want a recat? You can't handle a recat. Here is the recat. This week's maxi challenge was to help all of the gaggle of weirdos out back get ready for the runway. The holiest roller of the week was Mary Lou. This week, if they weren't a holy roller, they was a wet blanket, meaning Mary could choose from either Dev, the Devon maid, King Zaz or Rex Woofington to get the boot. Mary Lude Flan balled against the Flan Ball assassin, Nanook Huntington. Mary won and sent King Zaz back to MFIMDB1. Sorry, Zaz. No crown. F <laughs> 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 content. Can you give these good people some context for this content? Um. A big week, a big week of lots of big week. lots of mod revelations in these clips that we have um, clips that we is doing. That is all. Some, oh, Season... Marge goes to prison again. Well, nice, very good. That's that's all in the subtext of this clip, not so okay. much in the text. Clip twenty-seven, episode twenty-two. <laughs> oh, <my> Lisa, <laughs> <laughs> clip one. Home and Lee's Bard sat on sofa in Sam Sam's house. Flanders, Ned. Nine Ned. Nine Ned. Laughs J J Ha. It turns out there is a good side to you after all. Well, sir, says says well, oh, sir. Well, sir. <laughs> well, sir, I guess I know a little bit about what it's like to lose the lady of the house. Shoulders scrunched, eyes filled with tears. That's a meme right there. Sad Flanders meme. Yeah, this is a stretch. Um, I would you just said it's subtext about Marge being in prison, but it's it's text. Ned's it's talking implied. about it's the implied, woman that yeah. is not being around. I guess. Uh, so. This speaking of implied, this doesn't actually. He could be talking about Edna, but I thought I'd put it in here just in case. I think Losing he's probably the women of the house. Both. Yes, the ladies he should have of been the house twice or thrice technically because he drove one away. So. Um, and then, yes, sentimental tears. That is all. Marge is in prison, again, for something that Maud didn't do this time because she's dead. Uh, but then Ned comes around to tidy the house for them or something and then says that line and then leaves. Well, it doesn't tell us too much about Maud, but at least she's stayed dead and in the past. How long is this after the last, uh, the Fland Canyon thing? Uh, that was episode 19, so three episodes. Oh, not long then. Not long indeed. But what, um, long clip, clip two. Oh, oh, I've left clips two to six in my other pants pocket. Um, do you have, do you have time for a diary? <laughs> um, dear diary, today I went to the supermarket just to get some supplies for Rod's science project from his school that he goes to that is not the regular school. He had to make a working um, circulatory system, but he wasn't allowed to use, um, paper. He had to use other items, so I went and just, I just bought him a beef heart and took it home, and we just hurled glitter at it and prayers, and, um, also whilst I was at the supermarket, I bumped into, let's go with Jasper. He said, how's the house I sold you? I said, oh, it's fine, 20 years in, no complaints. And he said, well, it's been nice to see you, Maud. And it said, yeah, you too, Jasper. Bye, diary. Um, <laughs> just kind of a normal day, really, in the life of Maud Flanders. And 
hasn't really raised our spirits while we've been in this room. Maybe we need five or six more minutes of exposition from our narrator. Perhaps, but unfortunately, maybe we, um, maybe we need 12 more looks. Time for a song? Sure. Be yard set on self in some's house. Flanders nine, Ned. Last jahar. There's a good sturdy too, Wilson Stones. About how art sits lie. Last the lady of the house. Shoilder, dial, the lady wit. <laughs> Teeds. The end. The end. What a short show. It was a short show, but I got a feeling we're going to be in here a little bit longer. Just going to try and um, find our way out. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. There's someone at the window, but there is no window. Someone else is trapped in here with us, briefly. Really? His name is... Plus Nagy's Chomp. over there. Chomps McBillabong. You're fired. <laughs> Look at this, Sam. Ben. <laughs> Ka-ching. Ka-ching. A crystal mod. This could be our way out of here, couldn't it? Yes, it could. Maybe we can use it to uncover the room's secrets. They both touch the crystal mod and a magical flashback sequence begins. MFI MDB 1, entrance day. The screen shimmers and we are transported back to the day they were lured into the room. Podcast camera follows Sam and Ben as they follow a trail of delicious, delicious pound bakery pies set by the mischievous, mischievous Lilith. Pound bakery doesn't do pies. <laughs> how will they get out of this predicament? Let's see how it all pies out. Chomp, pie chomp, chomp. Filled, pie filled laughter improv. PFLI. Ha 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 ha. Chomp. It's a lot of exposition in this sketch. Yeah, we can get through. We don't even have to read this. The trail leads them to the room. The room that came to be. Interior. Day. The brothers. Brothers. Stare into the crystal mode. Reliving their mistakes of the past. The spirit of Lilith Godman. A mischievous figure emerges from the mode. Oh, my brothers, my brothers, you were too easy, Fort Fool. Welcome to my trap. Podcast camera captures Sam and Ben's shock expression. Podcast camera returns to flashback, showing them following Pound Bakery Pies, or PBPs, Pound Bakery doesn't do pies, <laughs> into the room, oblivious to its sinister nature. Inside the room that came to be, many have spent time, but few have left. The podcast camera showcased brief eerie sketches of other victims who fell prey to the room. Cut to podcast montage of Sam and Ben trying to escape, but the room's tricks and illusions keep them trapped. The podcast camera returns to present, showing the brothers, brothers, still entranced by the crystal maud and Lilith's spirit. Now, my dears, you'll be part of the cursed room's history. Forever. We will not let this room defeat us, Lilith. We will break free. They both focus on the crystal mod, hoping to find a way out with anticipation. Will they escape the clutches of the sentient room and the malevolent Lilith Goodman? Stay tuned for the thrilling conclusion. Podcast screen fades to black setting, the scene for the gripping conclusion, end of part two. <laughs> Why don't we spend the time looking into this mysterious crystal? Oh look, isn't that Diane Sharpie Sharpie? Yes, that's our former security guard. We haven't replaced her yet, either. No, we're very insecure at the moment, but... Title. The Watermelon Witness Sketch 1. Diane's Trial. Watermelon Planet, Courtroom Day. The courtroom is a whimsical place full of watermelon characters, including the great watermelon king as judge. All rise for the great watermelon King Judge. And remember, the only acceptable plea in this case is guilty of being delicious. Diane Watermelon, Sharpie Sharpie, in security uniform, stands nervously at the defendant's melony table. Order. Order. We're here to decide the fate of Diane the accused. You, defence lawyer Clarence the Cucumber, standing beside her. Anything to say? Don't worry, Diane. We'll get through this. Just remember, they can't, they can't, go Irish again. They can't prove intent. Well, prosecutor was. Caroline the Cantaloupe, can you energetically <laughs> address us? 
Ladies and gentlemen of the fruit, I present to you a case of premeditated watermelon abuse. Diane knew what she was doing, and I can see her itching and squirming uncomfortably right now. Clarence, my skin is itching like crazy. What's happening? Diane, I think you... Diane, I think you might be allergic to watermelons. That's what I was going with that. Your Honour, my client Diane is allergic to watermelons. She couldn't have premeditated anything if she didn't even know she was allergic to watermelons. Um, I'm puzzled. That makes no sense at all. And are you saying I'm allergic to something? I'm the judge here, not a fruit. <laughs> order, order. Clarence, does he just call himself a fruit? Yes, Diane, and he's serious. Well, it's time for me to seize the opportunity for wordplay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not get tangled up in fruitless arguments. I'm the prosecutor. Fruitless? This is fucking nuts. Ha ha ha. Order, order. Stop giggling, you fruits. <laughs> Later, I sentence you guilty to life service and community service. Ooh, wee. This is a juicy court case. With lots of tension and melodrama. I'm upset. This is the pits. <laughs> Don't worry, Diane. This is a chance for you to make amends. <laughs> Interior. Watermelon farm. Day. Diane is in overalls and straw hat. Almost fully mutated into a watermelon. She is frustrated, but as she works, she begins to understand the importance of responsible consumption. Responsible consumption. I guess you could say I found my true calling. I'm a melon f <laughs> I'm a melon farmer. Oh well that's it plenty of that, but look the, the the it's falling apart and there's a new sketch appearing. Who is that? I've never noticed that person before. Narrator, can you help us? We gotta be careful. Can you help us? Aro, it's me, Laudy Poncho, wife of Grogus. Here's a twisted tale. The Mott Flanders Internet Museum is a digital labyrinth of decay and chaos. Big Wayne strikes in, his face etched with unwavering determination. Big Wayne says to himself, Oh, I, I ain't, ain't no mess too big for Big Wayne to handle. Big Wayne navigates through the wreckage, his towering figure a beacon of resilience. Big Wayne suddenly comes upon the corroding monkey zombie, its digital form disintegrating before his eyes. Big Wayne springs into action, a monument of strength and capability. Oh, this ain't your final resting place, corroding, <laughs> corroding monkey zombie. Oh, oh, well, you know, you're wrestling with me and you've got and showing an incredible display of strength. But uh, I easily bested you and I'm going to put you in this safe corner of digital space. Big Wayne wrestled with the zombie, showing an incredible display of strength as he moved it to a safer corner of the digital space. Big Wayne he ventured deeper into the museum. He stumbles upon a photograph of the mysterious CWs. Ooh, a photograph of the mysterious CWs. I've never come across these before. Big Wayne stands still contemplative. Hmm, who are the CWs, and of what tales do they carry? Big Wayne pondered to himself. I think that this museum, even though it's presenting with me many challenges, I must remain optimistic and unyielding. Despite the myriad challenges that surrounded him, Big Wayne's optimism and unyielding resolve remain intact. With a determined tone, Big Wayne boomed out Ah, oh, I'll unearth the secrets buried here no matter the odds. Yes, let us. Edit Big Wayne's Living Tit Tattoo. Who's that speaking? It's me. Let us add Big Wayne's Living Tit Tattoo. Is that my tit tattoo talking to me? Yes, I'm your unborn twin. I respect your input. As the tattoo on my titty. And you're emerging as my tattoo right now. How strange. Let me gather my tools slowly and purposefully and let us... You and I tit tattoo. Let us rebuild this museum together. It's not it's not unbuilt. It is in the future. With his tit twin in tow, Big Wayne started gathering his tools, slowly but purposefully, ready to rebuild the Mott Flanders Internet Museum. End of scene.
Well, that was a strange uh, second sketch, wasn't it? It was. It but, certainly uh, was. But, but Sam, it seems like the picture is changing again for a third time. Title. Amateur Nike's Revival. Stage is set resembling an old factory on St. Kitts in Ben Nevis Island. The factory manager is pacing around nervously as old goblins one to three are busy working. These hobgoblins, these hobgoblins need to make better shoes. I can't afford any more complaints. He can't keep up with these ridiculous demands. Uh, oh my goodness. He's, he's clutched his chest and fell to the ground. <laughs> someone call for help. It's too late. Factory manager's dead. I'm dead. looking at you in shock. Hobgoblin's yeah. dilemma. What do we do now? The boss is gone, but we cannot let them shut us down. Without the bosses, our shoes will become even worse than they already are. We have, we have to, to find a way. To <laughs> we have to find yeah. a way to save our factory. Save our, save our, find a way to save our factory. Head office, New York. Bosses are discussing the factory's problems. These complaints about our shoddy shoes are outrageous. We need to shut down that effing factory immediately. But what about the hobgoblins working there? We can't just leave them without jobs. Wait, hold on. There's something on the TV that looks like it's connected. I am a newsreader. I am breaking the news. Hipsters and kids on TikTok and read about the new amateur Nikes on St. Kitts and Ben Nevis Island. What? Are they serious? It looks like our fortunes might be turning around. Hopeful, hopeful glances. Oh. Seeing returns back to the factory on the island as they roll. Hobgoblins celebrate the first of many, many victories. Did you hear the news? People love our shows. It seems like we might have a future after all. We just need to keep on making these, quote, amateur Nikes. We just need to keep making these amateur Nikes. Let's get back to work motivated by this unexpected turn of events. Ooh. Well, that was an interesting um, dilution of what could have been a particularly interesting or long story. But, yeah, uh, that was just a linear tale. It seems like it was based a little bit on, um, well, nothing really, but but eventually it seems like it could become based on Weekend at Bernie's and or Crocodile Dundee. Possibly. But enough of that, because another yet another sketch, a fourth sketch is appearing. Come on, narrator, give us some clues. Setting, Rex Woffington's Vietnamese jungle hut, filled with jars of hot sauce, a pot on the stove, and various spicy broths. Scene one. I'm the lighting lights. up. Oh, I'm lighting up. Uh, setting up at the stove and stirring a pot. Woof woof. These jars of hot sauce displayed around the hut. I hope I don't get any disturbances. Woof. Knock knock. Oh, uh, Garrett Goodman. Garrett Goodman. You're just in time to taste my latest creation, triple sock blower hot sauce. Rex, you and your hot sauce experiments. I'm ready for some flavor excitement. Here you go, lad. Woof. A spoonful of hot sauce. Let's both taste it together. Wow, Rex. This is incredible. What's your secret? Well, it's got a little extra kick, Woof. I added the ashes of my dear old friend and cult leader, Barker. Woof, woof. You did what? <laughs> Let's never speak of this again. Who's this coming in here? Digital native one, two, and three from neighboring village. Hey, are you Rex Muffington? We hear you make legendary hot and sores. All I see is leg and dirish. <laughs> We've been looking for it everywhere. We're effing dying to taste it, hun. Well, 
you've come to the right place. Woof woof. Try some. Whoa, this is out of this world. I'm blown away. Rex, you are a flavor genius. Good boy. Hail Lyca. 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 Hey, like Hey, like Hey, like Hey, like Hey, like Stop, stop it. Shush, shush, stop it. Oh, what is that? What on earth is happening? Woof, 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 woof. Oh, peeking out from behind the trees. It's just, it's only left in spaceship. Woof, woof, woof. Ah, shit. Spaceship. Fucking belt it. Run. How many characters are happening? Who are you? <laughs> woof, woof. We are the watermelon aliens, seekers of hottest hot sauce in hottest galaxy. Get hustling. Beat your melons won't water themselves. We ain't running a lazy fruit sanctuary here, you fruits. We treat you, we praise the heat, we feature your sauce to this planet. Ah, you've got to try this hot sauce, it's blooming brilliance. It's the spiciest thing I've ever had. Hail like it. 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 Well, this is extraordinary. Thank you, but I'm happy here in the jungle. Woof, I can't join you on your journey, Woof. We didn't ask. Thank you for this extraordinary sauce. Bye. 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 Oh, Woof. Well, what, what, what are the odds of that? Who would have thought it? Woof, I, I still can't believe that. I can't believe that just happened. Well, my heart sauce, woof, 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 it's really out of this world. Can we have a bit more? Any left? Hey, Lyca. More? Hey, Lyca. More? Hey, Lyca. Odd. And that was, that was a fast pace, wasn't it? A lot happened in just a few short minutes there. I feel like even though the oxygen's running out in this room and baby Derrida's is, uh, Derrida, baby, you okay? ADR baby noises. We can swat. We can swat. Um, what's this stinks. next sketch? Sketch of fire? Well, he stinks, doesn't he? Have you got any nappies in here? Tell you what, why don't you <laughs> use... Wang left of you. Why don't we listen to the next sketch and cheer us all up? Fuck all and the gang, episode two, Island of Illusions. A dock. An escape boat is waiting on a choppy sea as a storm rages, a la Pokemon, the first movie. Me too strikes back. Meow too strikes back. Mew too strikes back. Having fled the grasps of a certain pandemic denier, Foucault, Debord, Rambo, Bordeaux, and Carrie Derrida prepare to leave for their island safe haven. The world is finally ready for our message. <laughs> Death ideologies and BMC faith Derrida will change the world. They have received an invitation to the remote island, a la Pokemon the first movie, Mew 2 Strikes Back. Welcome to society. I believe I am on the island from the first Pokemon movie, therefore I am there. Boredom is always counter-revolutionary, always. Kinda boredom, however, is counter not fucking lit. He arrives and is greeted by the Oracle. Behold, fellow Lucifers, it is the Oracle! No, naturally, I find tourism, human circulation considered as consumption, as fundamental. <laughs> I find tourism, human circulation considered as consumption, is fundamentally nothing more than the leisure of going to see what has become banal. But this, Sunderland Pokemon First Movie Island, is fucking lit. Welcome, you seek us a truth. We show your vision. Here's members. Uh, hello and start participating in society's activities. Utopia unveiled. I see you become more involved in our society. You begin to notice that something's not right. There's something strange about this place. It is not the utopia we imagined. Room, the oracle cannot be trusted. Sorry, it can. I just want it to be heard. Oh, you want to escape my cult? You expose my cult? Are you saying cult? They sneak into my headquarters and find evidence of my cult activities. Beloved cult. 
What is that? What are you saying? We must reveal the truth. My cult members chase these people away. Where's my shock? Oh my goodness, run. they have escaped. Run, run, philosophers, run. I'm intact and I don't give a damn. Seems they have returned safely to mainland. Old Chris Corporant. We have seen the dangers of blind ideology. Critical thinking and free thinking are our greatest weapons. We had a bike boat. This is, this is a simplified script. You can expand on it uh, as needed. Seven prawn rings for a pound. <laughs> well, that was a particularly uh, deep... To be fair, the last time, the last time we saw them, they were trapped in a jar in Jordan Peterson's lair and it got us blocked from YouTube. Well... But then, I'm pretty sure some of them are on mountains now. Some of them are so we don't know when that took place, but what is clear is that large parts of the st story were admitted in a very postmodern uh, way, but it seems like Sketch 6 is coming out right now, which is, uh, 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 we're, we're getting to see all our old friends here we haven't seen for a long time. F-U-N-E-X, Ergun and Envelope's Endless Space Time Endeavours, The Battle with the Paperclip Conundrum, Dim lights, a futuristic spaceship cockpit with Ergun and envelope at controls. A starry background illuminates the scene. Ergun looks out of the window, concerned. Enveloped. Looks like something's wrong with you. Oh dear, I'm turning into a pancake. They land on a peculiar planet. Look out, Ergun. Strange creatures approach. Oh no. Welcome, Antares. Your friends... The friend's condition is caused by the black hole nearby. We can help you, of course, but you must first defeat the generic evil of the far planet. We'll do anything to save Enveloped. That's not my name. Okay. Quiet Enveloped. Let's go and face the... Come on then, let's go and face the villain and stop you from becoming a pancake. Yeah, okay. Paper clips. I am a paperclip, I am a paperclip, I am a paperclip, I am a paperclip. Do you think you can beat me? Ergon, it's just a paperclip. Stay focused, we can do this. I will turn you into a paperclip too. The battle plan. Let's huddle, come here, let's huddle. It's why the, the villain's giving us time to come up with a plan. Oh yes, take your time. If you any am. I've got an idea enveloped. We'll use the F-U-N-E-X's folding feature to create a giant paper airplane. Paper airplane? I will add help, you tosser. We'll fly it into the paperclip's weak point. That tiny crease on his back, Sandy. Quick, let's fold, fold, fold. Let's make the F-U-N-E-X, F-U-N-E-M, change towards the paperclip. Charge, charge. What is this attacking the tiny weak spot in my back? So with F U N E X. Oh God! You crushed directly into my back, causing me to crumble and dissipate into a black hole. Oh, no, 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 no. The paper. Oh, the paper clip is defeated. Look out, envelope! Help me! He's sucking me into the black hole with him. No, envelope. Vanish. Vanish. Envelope's gone. I have to set off on a rescue mission to rescue envelope and bring her back to her three-dimensional form. I won't leave you behind, Enveloped. We're in this together. Sometime later or whatever. I rescued, <laughs> rescued you. You're back. back. We will continue our endless space-time endeavours, protecting the universe from all kinds of strange and wacky threats. We're not even a pancake anymore. Come on, let's get back in the F-U-N-E-X and disappear into the cosmic unknown. Silly cow. Ergon and Envelope at the end of space time. Oh, that's nice. It's like our Twitter, X. Q N E X. Yes, we have an F and X. Well, that was a particularly wacky and funny. <laughs> it seems like a lot of these, a lot of these sketches quickly, quickly uh, run through the third act, which in most, in most <laughs> movies and, and TV shows, 
the third act is 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 well expanded on i like the fact that this is simply cuts past the chase yes there was simply no need for it we know how it's going to end and we know where we are in act two I, to be honest i didn't know how that was going to end with the pancake and the paper it. clips and the black holes it's probably going to end um, this is definitely distracting us from the oxygen running out in this room it's good snaggy just lying down <laughs> he's not moving a lot <laughs> he's fine Snaggy like doesn't even need oxygen why don't we catch up with the uh, jack derrida over there is the baby who's who's oxygen depleted body is uh seems to be dealing with it pretty well to be honest we can swap deconstruct yeah he also doesn't need oxygen it's just us two well he's but dead isn't he one thing that we forgot to mention after him becoming tiny and a baby okay. is that he's, he's actually still dead yes i was gonna say how when when did we kill him off but we didn't no, no, life, life did um well, how about we how about we we catch up with the with in Anakis Zanakis uh, in a um, in a in a voiceover that's hopefully drenched in so much distortion <laughs> that it's not possible to hear any of the words. That sounds like a plan to me. What's going on in the Wee Wee Principality, Rob? Wee Wee Principality. Oh, good enough of that though what about this this is sketch seven this isn't even a sketch look this is a cassette on the floor and if you put the tape into the um <coughs> on top of this thing let's see if it starts playing it's playing well, you just put it into the crystal morph mouth the ducky mouth like a tape that welcome to another episode of demons donkeys dungeons and dollhouses live from the miniverse i'm your host anton ouija Bo. And tonight, my guest is Felicia Hawthorne. How are you tonight, Felicia? I'm doing great, Anton. Excited to be here. Fantastic. I hope you can keep that accent up for the entire episode. Now, let's jump right into our first topic, donkeys. Right. Tonight, we're going to talk about the rare and unique breed of Baudet de Boutois donkey. Felicia. Could you share some insights about this remarkable breed? The Earth Moth Mail. Well, certainly, Anton. The Baudet de Poitou is a French donkey breed, known for its shaggy long coat. Oh, together. Find the whole top, son, don't ruin the ending. Just on the ending. <laughs> on the ears. They were originally bred for heavy weight, like plowing steel. <laughs> but their numbers have lost. But their numbers have dwindled over the years. I die. They are cherished for their calm and gentle nature, making them perfect ghost therapy and as companion animals. They truly have a unique arm with their woolly appearance. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating, Felicia. Now let's dive into our next segment about doll's houses. Our featured dollhouse tonight is Enchanted Cottage of Firwood Meadow. Could you tell our listeners a little bit more about this enchanting dollhouse? Enchanted Cottage of Firwood Meadow is a truly a sight to behold. It's a meticulously crafted dollhouse that exudes magic and whimsy. Intricate details within it make you feel like you've stepped into a fairy tale world. Every room is tiny, handcrafted furniture, and the walls are adorned with miniature paintings of mythical creatures. It's a masterpiece of artistry and has captivated dollhouse enthusiasts worldwide. It's often said that those who gaze upon it can't help but feel a sense of wonder and enchantment. Enchanting indeed, all together now. And now our final topic of the evening. Is it our final one? It seems like we we skipped over the demon. Maybe the dungeon. It's hard to say. Um, our, fi- our final topic of the evening is demons are featured. If the demon is none other than Q glitches and I know. Uh, could you enlighten our listeners about? Oh, is a 
of aging and conflict. <laughs> He's often associated with the scenes of independence and rebellion. Listen up, this is relevant to the story. In some accounts, <laughs> the first wife of Adam from that created the same clay created from the same clay as him, refusing to be subservient to him. This rebellion led to her being banished from Eden, where she subsequently became a symbol of sin. In other traditions, she's seen as a luring men to their downfall. Lilith's multifaceted character in folklore and modern literature also. Well, thank you for sharing the light on uh, the capture of them boys, and that wraps up another exciting episode of Demons, Donkeys, Dungeons, Dollhouses, Life in the Manyverse. A big thank you to our guests for Alicia Hawthorne and the listeners for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week for more intriguing discussions on the many wonders of the Manyverse. What did you just say, Richard? Well... No Um well that got a little bit messy in the middle there with all that noise and all that like tape whirring sound and those those demonic backwards noises. But that was very scary, Zaz, but let's be move on cause... what's that? Must be an old tape. Probably just an old tape smothered in farts. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's gone. The tape's vanished. Like an old old it, table. Still more day it. Um sketch eight. Sketch eight indeed. Sunderland Tales. Nobody here ever seen him before. The unleashing of the monstrosity. Sunderland Tales. Nobody here ever seen him before. The unleashing of the monstrosity. Chow Dai and Rao Chow Do. The stage is dimly lit as various cages and contraptions are scattered around. Dr. Drake Scaramouche is preparing his latest experiment whilst his assistant, nurse Judy Finnegan, reluctantly aids him. A camera is set up to record Finnegan for a YouTube video. Welcome back, Finny fans. Today we have a very special unboxing. Nurse Judy Finnegan, please step into the frame. So, hello everyone. Today we're unveiling something in incredible. Yes, here's, here's a box, a strange box. Oh my goodness, a clawed monstrosity has burst out, snarling and hissing. Monster noises. Uh, 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 oh, chaos is ensuing. Come on, I need to take control of this situation. Lock the bloody door, Finnegan. It's getting dark and this is not going according to plan. I'm going to rush to lock the laboratory door. That clod monstrosity is prowling the room. It's knocking all your stuff over. Oh, bloody hell. Um, let's try and contain him while your VOA narrates as the action unfolds. In a desperate struggle to regain control, Finnegan and Scaramouche wrestle with the unleashed monstrosity, but it proves to be a formidable adversary. Oh, good job, VOA. You did a great job of doing that voice over there. Monster noises. Let me grab this makeshift weapon and attend fend off this clawed monstrosity. Finnegan, what are you doing? I'm using the fire extinguisher to create a smoke screen. Ah, oh, good. You've momentarily blinded him by the smoke. Yeah. Fetch the okay. tranquilizer dart, Finnegan. We need to take this beast down. Finnegan fetches the trank gun. Here it is. Oh, I'll, I'll aim right in the face. Right up the nose. Ow! Oh, he's starting to lose consciousness. Brilliant. Oh, we did it. It's over. Fuck it. What is this? Look at his face, Finnegan. He seems... he seems... Uh, he looks almost exactly like your husband. Richard. Rauchade. 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 He's, can you hear him? He's just quietly saying Rauchade. Jaude loves Rauchade. Is that what he's saying? Jaude loves Rauchade. That 
doesn't sound like the official version. What could it mean? Well, that didn't go exactly as he's dead. He seems like he's dead. Oh, oh, God. Okay. Put him in a cage. Another oh, year. <laughs> We've survived yet another near disastrous creation. Didn't go exactly as planned, did it, Finnegan? No, it certainly did not, Dr. Scaramouche. I hope this doesn't make it to the blooper reel. In Someone the filming. Yeah, we're on it's a YouTube, YouTube video. We established that at the beginning of this oh, sketch. Yes. This is well, a found footage sketch. We have three likes. Monster noises. Well, ja Jaude and Ru Rochardo, I hope they don't come back to haunt us at any time soon. Me neither. Well, that was a, a, a bizarre... It's like we're seeing all the little bits of all the things that have gone on around us, and it's hard to tell if it's past, present, or future, isn't it? As always is in this world. What year is this? Oh. I'll walk with me. What's happening now? It looks like um, is the, the screen, the title on this crystal mod says the continued nonsense of Stamp and Statman John. This scene, it looks like Stamp is the grumpy night watchman, and Statman John, the stat obsessive Statman, is the sat in the dingy cluttered watchman shed, and Stamp appears to be grumbling about chilly weather. That's this infernal cold. Can't we find some way to warm this place up, John? My oh boys, I've got just a thing. I've been studying the latest in home heating technology and I've ripped up a contraption that's bound to keep us toasty, boys. I pulled a remote control from my pocket and pressed this button. Oh, a Rube Goldberg series of events is unfolding in front of my eyes. A series of mouse traps triggered setting off fireworks which ignite a rocket launching a flaming arrow at a pile of logs. I know, boys, it's created a small bonfire in a shed. Oh, fuck. Oh, bloody fucking hell. You've said it. John, John, you fucking maniac. You've set it. You've set our shed on fire. No, it's boys. It's a state of the art heating system. Just sit there. The room will be warm in a minute. It'll be bloody warm. It's on fire, John. It's on fire. My legs are, oh, my legs are on fire. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, boys. My hair is on fire. Is right now. I'm not like Michael Jackson now. Pepsi, Pepsi had fudge. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, put fire out. Put fire out. Christ. <laughs> For fuck's sake, for fire out. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. There's no fire extinguisher. It's run out. It's run out. Uh, 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 we're covered in foam now. That will protect us though, won't it, boys? It protect us. It protect us. I can't stand up. My legs are on fire. Now my body's on fire, John. This is not good. Ah, uh, boys. Your fucking contraptions always make things worse. We need something practical, not a, com not a comedy of errors. Boys, you've got... I, I see your point there, Stan, but... But now we're sat outside, in the cold, in the snow, with only burnt rags as clothes. What else have I got up my sleeve? I've got it. The ultimate tea-making gadget. A massive, convoluted tea-making machine. With levers and pulleys and flashing lights, boys. Tea? Hey, you've just burned down that fucking house, John. <laughs> to stay warm here in, in Arctic temperatures, not launch a rocket to the effing moon. Oh, stick with me, Stamp. Stick with me, and I'll go. Oh, short is <laughs> I'm being sprayed with boiling water. <laughs> Oh, oh, oil's coming up all over my skin. Oh, it burns so bad, John. It's burning so badly. Oh, my God. It's burning. That's it. We've had enough. We will freeze to death here in, this, in these wet, wet ranks. If you don't come up with a practical solution. Oh, stand boys. You're right. I just got carried away again. What was that? Odd. Oh. It's a modern space heater just left randomly outside the, the now cinders of our apartment, of our house. Boys, look, Stan, it's a space heater. It's perfect. Oh, plug it in. Let's hug this in these sub-zero temperatures. Ah, oh, we'll survive. My stats say I think we'll even survive to January the 1st. Not fucking likely, is it? 
but this is more like it, John. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the best. Oh, Stan, you're right. Let's not overcomplicate things anymore. Slam. Oh, oh shit. Oh, I've locked the heater inside the, the, the charred remains of our building and we're locked outside. You've done it again, John. Oh, my bad. Wah, wah, wah. Well, <laughs> well, it seems like we originally wrote some characters that were funny and then we killed them off. But it's good <laughs> that we could occasionally bring them back to uh, for some slapstick. Yeah. But here's another here's another funny set of characters that uh, that may have outstayed their welcome. Sketch ten. The scene opens with Child Commissioner Monkey Ezra. A charismatic and zany figure, he is standing on the construction site of MFIMDB Rebuild in Rill. Timid and quiet monkeys slash lemurs slash octopi slash camels slash monkeys are working in a comically chaotic manner. That's a job well done, folks. This is truly the best day to dawn on rail in centuries. Oh, thank you. I I'd love to mimic your confidence, but I always fail spectacularly. <laughs> My life is a series of mishaps. Are we done, CCM Ezra? No, because I'm here now, got Grand Thunder Boss. Um, a uh, job well done indeed. Is this the last one to build? Oh no, it's the second one. Well, the first one did uh, fall down a bit. Did a little dance. Hey, 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 you fell down. You. Oh, the, this one's spinning, f wobbling as well. Oh, it's collapsed in a comical cloud of dust. Good job, everyone. We've just created modern art. Confetti. Confetti for everybody. Sorry it's all sticking in your fair, but stay positive, everyone. Despite the confetti fur debacle, here's your pay, my magnificent mess-making monkeys, octopi, lemurs, all of you. There isn't one of you who hasn't done a job well done. Thank you, Commissioner Ezra. Here's a check. Uh, I've... It seemed like this check is for a comically excessive amount. Four thousand dollars per head. For for our efforts that can only be described as slapstick. Um, let's go and celebrate our earnings. Um, before another impending threat appears. Oh no! <laughs> I've heard it's payday, and I demand a. Oh shit! It's the Roswolf. And she's cut brought with her a team of animal performers. She's got juggling raccoons and breakdancing pigeons. I hope surreal chaos with this over-the-top circus atmosphere doesn't ensue. Eat them all, rip the throats out, pigeons. I'll rebuild your library, but it will require a Shakespearean tragedy and a circus show. How much will it cost? Smile. Are you working it out on that giant oversized calculator? No, you you know what it is. And doing a ridiculous interpretive dance with yes. giant Dave. Big big Dave. Is that an interpretive dance you're doing with Big Dave Cody calculator? The steer Graham is immeasurable, like the mysteries of the cosmos. Four thousand dollars, please. <laughs> eat, eat the bones. Eat your bones. Eat their bones! Well, that was another wacky thing that just happened while we're sat in this room watching all these sketches. It says here... Oh, wow. ske Passing of time. <laughs> I mean, what else are we going to do in this room? We can barely breathe. There's no food in here. We just got a baby and a, a, a worryingly passive dog. And uh, I'm not even sure why that demon Lilith, uh, like, decided to, to take us hostage in here. No, she seems to have real issues with us. Right, well, let's not, we're be we're, to be honest, we better not get into that. Um, it's quite a bit sketchy 11, though. Looks like the testing is lively in the Cosmic Chaos Cafe in Space Heaven. Take it away. Well, it seems like celestial beings are sipping on galaxies of whirlwinds of whimsy instead of coffee, and a sign outside reads, Stay away, fools, aka, enter at your own cosmic risk. Well, 
Jeff, Jeff Apple, Jeff Space Apple 2, let's plot our next cosmic caper. What do you think our next adventure should be? How about we spice up the Cosmic Chaos Cafe with a twist of pure celestial chaos? Don't worry, I've got a new space cloning machine. I'm gonna make Space Jeff Chaos Apple Madelaide Jesus 3. He's even more beloved than the previous clones. Uh, what's happening? Where am I? Don't worry, SJCAMJ3. You're in space heaven. We've got a cosmic mission for you. Let's set it in motion. Cosmic patrons, enjoy your whirlwind smoothies. SJCAMJ3. You dress up as a talking asteroid and roll up to the tables. Hello, Cosmic Travelers. I'm Asteroid. Jeff, and I bring you a special offer today. What's the offer, Asteroid, Jeff? Oh. If you finish your Cosmic Smoothies in under five seconds, you get a complimentary trip to the Andromeda Galaxy. Oh, chug, 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 oh, chug, chug, I can't stop drinking, help, chug, 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 there is a cos, look at this cosmic smoothie tornado, chug, have I won, have I won, chug, 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 I can't stop drinking, have I won, chaos is ensuing, every, all of the patrons, including me, are downing these cosmic smoothies in alarming rate, chug, tables are floating in midair, chug, 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 and celestial beings are tumbling around, chug, I can't stop drinking, help. That was pure chaos. That was pure cosmic chaos, SJCAMJ3. Exactly, Master Jeff. Space Heaven needed a little bit of extra fun. Uh, the, the cosmic chaos is moving, but... Hold on. What's that celestial hamster wheel descending from the ceiling? And inside it, celestial hamsters of pure light spinning the wheels, creating a dazzling display of colors. Squeak and build my cosmic wheel of joy. Squeak, we bring cosmic delight to all. Squeak. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god, so much chaos. The cosmic jazz man is playing a personalized jazz camboo. Dancing nebula swirling around. We're turning this cafe into a cosmic carnival and still no toast. Asteroid Jeff, reveal your true form and join the dancing. Oh, the patrons, they're loving it now, they're laughing and dancing, realizing it's all in good cosmic spirit. Squeak! 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 This is the most celestial fun I've had in ages. Chug, let's do this again, Asteroid. What? What did you say there? Again, Asteroid, Jeff. My goodness, this cosmic cafe is transforming into a galactic party with celestial beings, beings reveling in the madness of space heaven, and all the while hamsters of pure light continuing their celestial dance. Squeak and behold my cosmic wheel of joy! JSAJ2 and JSACJ3, you truly are. Dancing amongst the cosmic revelry, hamsters of light, and your mischievous plans turn into cosmic celebrations. I love it here. Dog. What will the Jeff Apple clones get up to next? Will OGJA continue to write blank checks on a whim? The Cosmic Chaos Cafe will return. Well, that was a strange one, but at least we got to see Jeff, which, you know, our boss who we haven't seen him for a long time, he seems like he's having a good time off in heaven with his clones. His, his, his clones who have anagrams longer than actual names. Yeah, he took his, um, he took the life of Space Jesus and just made it his own, didn't he? He literally did, and, and he's been rewarded by some kind of whimsical cosmic cafe. Brilliant. He's got where he can just humiliate the patrons. Um, so it uh, it looks like um, this is going on forever. Here's, here's sketch <laughs> number 11. <laughs> Captain Shook vlogs the Cosmic Convergent. The interior of a spacecraft that has been utterly destroyed by the an explosion. The, de the debris win is scattered around and... <laughs> The debris win is scattered around and in the centre lies Captain Snoop Shook Vlogs, the charismatic but dishevelled space explorer. The twisted cult of dogs wearing bizarre dog masks around him surround him as the spaceship, spaceship emits its final low hums. The threat to our dominance is no more, Wolf. 
His soul is rising from his lifeless body, ethereal and lost among the shimmering stars. Hail Lyca. Hail Lyca. Simultaneously. Oh, the soul of Natalie Balloon Manticore, a charismatic but morally ambiguous rogue podcast host, is emerging from over there. Oh, their souls are converging, melding together into a new entity, Natalie Balloon Roboticore. Who am I now? What is this place? Oh my goodness. Now. Now, we see the spaceship crashing onto the mysterious and isolated Sunderland Island. The craft spaceship is The craft spaceship is intricately designed with sparkling wires and shattered screens. Dr. Drake Scaramouche and his aide, Nurse Judy Finnegas, stumble across the wreckage, their faces filled with awe and curiosity. What a discovery, Judy. We must investigate. Jody. Careful, Dr. Discaramouche. This could be dangerous. Put your lab coats and equipment on and let's perform experiments on this crashed robot. Take your damn hands off me, Finnegan. Holographic interface displaying various graphs and data. Ooh, this robot's transforming from a benevolent entity to a sinister one is subtle but distinct. Multi but subtle. I am unleashed. This evil force within this robot is threatening us. We must find a way to separate them. Separate my soul from this rooting, tooting crocodile now. I'm filled with guilt because of what I've done, but I've made the difficult decision to separate their souls. The expressions are terse and conflicted. I'll stay. His eyes are glowing with malevolence. This transformation is eerie unsettling. His romantic movements are becoming more erratic. What just happened? My soul has been transferred to the body of a giant lizard. Represented by an imposing puppet or and or actor in a formidable expression. The transformation process is a mesmerizing display of lights and smoke. My lizard feet are taking the first David tentative steps. This is incredible. I must get to Twitch to tell my fans. But it seemed like you don't have full control over your body, Shook Vlogs. Let's go on a journey to see if we can train you across the uncharted terrain, the lush exotic vegetation, and the hidden dangers. Okay. My time will come, Richard and Judy. Richard and Judy. Good morning, Richard and Judy. Oh, Shug Vlogs, it's brilliant to have you around. I hope the three of us had lots of adventures. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like, oh, it seems like the, the battery on this is uh, is whirring itself down. And all we have is just a, a, a monologue from Onion, I think. Uh, oh, no. Two <laughs> <Be> more. <laughs> We can do them tomorrow if you want. No, let's let's do it. Let's All right. It. Seems like working. Onion's got something to read. Yeah. As I, the embittered parrot Onion, embarked on my new life as the owner of the MFIMDB, that's the Maud Blanders Internet Museum and Database, in Dead Bad's Wisconsin, North Dakota, my bitterness was an ever-present companion. A cruel twist of fate that led me to create a museum dedicated to Maud Blanders, a woman I loved with every fibre of my being, was a relentless thorn in my side. Each Maud-related item I catalogued, each image I displayed, served as a constant reminder of the torment inflicted upon my embittered soul. My bitterness knew no bounds, and it was fueled not only by my loathing for Maud, but also by my seething hatred for the elusive figure known as King B7N, who had wronged me in ways that were beyond measure. I was consumed by the single-minded determination to unmask King B7N's true identity and exact my long-awaiting revenge. The MFIMDB became my hunting ground, a place where I hoped to uncover the secrets that, were le that would lead me to my nemesis. Even as I contemplated my vendetta against King B7N, my thoughts invariably drifted back to Zanakis, the, the Aya player who had once been my musical rival. Hi. 
and taken then Akisidaya and, in a cruel twist of fate, transformed into a vampire empowered by a slither of darkness from the devil's box. The bitterness I harboured towards Zanakis was a festering wound in my embittered heart, propelling me forward on my quest for vengeance. Amidst my contemplations, I couldn't help but ponder the enigmatic presence of Sketch 12, Onion Cold, Ruse. This mysterious figure remained a source of intense curiosity and fascination, and I suspected that Sketch 12 held the key to unravelling the many enigmas that had come to define my embittered life. As the eternal winter descended upon the worldwide platform, I considered my options, fueled by a bitterness that seemed to know no bounds. I was resolute in my determination to unearth and truth about my adversaries and to carve out a new, even more bitter path for myself. That's it. The pain, resentment and darkness that consumed me were now my weapons. I was composing the symphony of my vengeance. Determined to make the world remember my name. With a bitter sneer, I took to the sky, soaring through the night as the world around me cracked and cackled with malevolent energy. Xenakis, oblivious to the tempest brewing in my embittered heart, sat alone in his castle, unaware of the storm that was about to be unleashed. Do the onion bit here. Do the onion bit here. Oh, that was fun to hear about onion and see what he was up to. Yes, what a cheeky bastard. What a cheeky, cheeky little bastard. And it seems like um, it seems like the battery is really starting to wear down on this uh, this magic crystal, and uh, it's really getting quite hard to breathe in here. So let's hope that someone saves us relatively soon. There's but some it, little pockets of oxygen stuck in the artifacts around the walls. Yeah, I let's, let's all lick the bubbles. walls. Yeah. Sucking out, what about, there's, a, there's an arrow here, big old arrow, and basically if we chop it up, there's loads of air bubbles in that, we can suck, we can suck oh, the yes. air out of that. That'll probably keep us going for, for a week. Yes, at least. A dimly lit mysterious basement below the local university where Arnold H. formerly homeless robot turned occult detective and spit calculated day, a quirky scientist embark on the supernatural adventures. Well, Dave, it's time for us to bleep 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 go to the university filled with ancient tomes and arcane symbols, the hidden portal crackling with eerie energy. Harold, me, and you in is Dr. Dave. Let's cautiously enter this basement. Dave, adjusting my wizard hat, I said, Dave, there's definitely something unnatural about this place. You're absolutely right, Harold. Look at this hidden portal. It's positively crackling with otherworldly energy. I think we've stumbled upon a mortal, mortal to the multiverse. Hmm. Hmm. The portal's humming and flickering and casting an eerie glow on the room. Is <laughs> this? What do you have to say? Re battery off and just a second. <laughs> what is it? Who, who are you? So we often and scared how what is the thing? How do you know my name? I know a lot of things and also I, I don't know now to me and so we often battery. But don't worry, little one, we're here to investigate and make things right. Um I have a little pet. It's an unknown motivator for a pet. It looks like a cross between a cat and a jellyfish. And there's our mystical feline jellyfish friend, the animal pet unknown multiversal. Multiversal. What brings you here, old chum? You cross oh, our cat. They must have sensed the disturbance as well. Perhaps it's here to guide us. I think this portal is connected to the recent supernatural occurrences at the university. We need to find out more. Let's approach this portal cautiously. I've read about these in my ancient tomes, but I've never seen one in person. It's, I think it's connected to other dimensions. I'm stroking my calculator chin. Exactly, Harold. And you know who might help us understand this better? A Ouija board. A mm. Ouija board. Let's... Activate our multiversal teleportation device to contact a Ouija board. 
Um, it's very peculiar for lots of flashing lights and dials, but don't be intimidated, we often. Okay, I'm gonna go see lots of anything. In fact, my bed is in one of the mods. Oh, because you're a battery. Yeah, I'm a battery. But I'm an orphan battery. I didn't think batteries even had parents. Yeah, of course they do. No magic. Alright. Well, and now, this one. Bleep, 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 bleep. Oh, greetings, Harold and Dave. What strange adventures have you embarked upon this time? Oh, hey, Ouija, bro. We've discovered a portal to the multiverse beneath the university. It's causing supernatural disturbances. A portal, you'll say? Intriguing. I'll be there shortly. His projected arrival time is on screen. We are not alone in this quest. A Ouija boy will help us decipher this portal's mysteries. Let me take out this bag. Oh, I forgot I had the head of Natalie Balloon Robotico inside it. You forgot I was in the bag again, didn't you? Well, oh, don't bullshit me, Dave. You forgot me again. You forgot about me when we went to see Lava Head. <laughs> Oh, don't bullshit me, Dave. You forgot me again. You forgot about me when we went to see La Bohème. You forgot about me when you met S Club 7. And you forgot me now. No, don't put me back in the bag. My skin needs white filaments. Dave, this case is turning out to be more enigmatic than I expected. Let's prefer, let's prepare for A. Ouijibo's arrival and the mysteries that await. I'm liking Paul. Yes, I know you are, we orphan battery. An awesome multiversal pet. <laughs> let us let us just sit here and wait. The end head in the back. What an ending. <laughs> head in a bag. Oh it's it's faded out. It's it faded out. It's totally stopped. Batteries run out. Er is getting very, very thin indeed. I, I've I've eaten all the chocolate, and I've, all I'm left with is the bubbles of Er. Uh, oh, yes, they're almost all... gone as well. Lilith Goodman has also vanished, and there is a momentary silence. Yeah, Lilith was here and there for a few things, wasn't she? Mocking us. You probably have to drop a few of those in the episode for this to make sense. <laughs> Yes. Oh, the door's probably... opening. The door's opening. Fantastic. Grab grab Snaggy and Baby Derrida and let's get the F out of here. Let's go. Get oh, up, who's... Snaggy. Nap time's over. Woof. woof, 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 woof. Oh, thank the Lord you're okay. Hell like her. What did you say? Nothing. All right. <laughs> let's go. Oh, my goodness. But what's going on there? Wet Panther and Clara Gunnamoo and those cats and... All the other people and things that we've Hardy hired. Fox. Mr. Thousands. Hardy Fox. Hardy Fox. And they're all gathered around what appears to be a lifeless body. This this season was going so well. It was a soft reboot. There was no shenanigans. And now we've been locked into a sentient room by a by what can only be described as some kind of demon um, with our baby and a dog. And now we awake to find a whole new cast of characters gathered around a headless body, a decapitated body in the middle of our museum. <laughs> oh, and you know whose body? I think it might be Starman's body. Oh, no. Well, that's oh, not... Um, it's not really news, does it? It's just kind of tasteless to decapitate an already dead person. Well, Stepman's lifeless body, body now headless, yeah. with a shocking atmosphere of despair <laughs> in the room. In the midst of chaos, tragedy strikes. The headless body of Statman has been left. I can't remember Stop what that. <laughs> hey, Statman, Statman, wake up. You don't even, they don't even know who Statman is, do they? They didn't, they didn't even appear. Everyone knows Statman. He was the finest mac and cheese making stat machine this side of Wesley Mesnes. Oh, what in the world? Oh, my goodness. Lilith has vanished. The sentient room has vanished. What the F is happening here? This feels like a season finale, but we have one episode left. We do. Like Buffy season four. What Stamp Stamp is now just weeping on the floor, holding the Statman's lifeless body. John, John, John. Oh, I lost you once. I lost you once, you daft bastard. I don't want to lose you again. Stamp. Who said that? Who said that? What was that? Boys, boys. Who's saying that? Look under my, look under my thumb, boys. What? What are you saying? Look, boys, look under me thumb. 
Oh, why does he say look under his thumb? Oh, it's a little piece of paper rolled up. It's a cord. It's a message. It's a cord. The cord says basement. What could the wet message wet basement mean? What wet, could the message basement wet mean? Wet sweatpants. Wet sweatpants. Is that what you just called him? Wet sweatpants. Thanks, Stamp. <laughs> wet sweatpants. I'm losing my mind here. I'm losing my mind. What could the message mean, basement? Let's go to the basement and find the answers below. Yes. Let's all head to the basement and see whether we can find the demon. <laughs> Who also seems, I don't know if you noticed, but the baby Derrida is also missing. I've got a good feeling that... Oh, um, no. That uh, the demon Lilith has taken it for some reason. Um, that would make are... that our fourth abduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed the theme. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. So I don't know about you, but I'm in suspense. To be concluded. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. What a fantastic turnout for I, Rogley Ponchos. First stage direction here at the MFIMBB1's actual auditorium. I'd like to thank my wife, Lel Poncho, for her ongoing chatbot support. Let's give a hand to the cast of the Jacques Derrida's Funnies, our special number two. Natalie Balloon Mondicor. How basically doesn't do pies. <laughs> Beef Wellington. Monster noises. <laughs> Parn some bleach. A la Pokemon, the first movie, Me Too Strikes Back. Mao Balloon Monty Core. Breathing dying to taste it, hun. KT Knowles Border. Dedicated to more plumbers. A woman I love. HL Red. That's it, but it's Anna if you can't. Fuck off. Harry Timby. Is that an interpretive dance you're doing with Big Dave Cody Calculator? Pip the Bard. Eat your bones! And introducing Terry Lean Trimmings. I'm intact and I don't give a damn! And Mycelium Frute. Juxtapause. And of course, King Burry. <laughs> and King Zaz. I'm a melon. <laughs> <laughs> also known as kimby 7 nn let's finally give a big hand to me, Gravely Poncho. Good night, and Gravely Poncho.